Suppose we have a web-based business and suppose these are our price and corresponding cells in a couple of days. For example, here I have set the price 289 and I have sold 30 units. Here I have set it to 60 and I have sold 50. Now suppose we like to develop a linear curve to represent this demand. Here I select my data, insert, scatter graph, add chart element, access title, primary horizontal. I'll go here and I say equal to sales. Uh, Add chart element, vertical, I go over there, say equal to price. And for chart title, equal to price and quotation mark space versus space quotation mark and cells and I enter it, price versus sales. Then I come here and say equal to price versus sell. Now I have these data. I will go over here and I type add trend line and I select linear trend line. I say display equation on the line. Therefore the equation is telling me that price is equal to 175 minus 2.5 sales. If sales is zero, price is 175. If price is zero, sales is 175 divided by 2.5. Add display R square. And R square here is a large number. R square coefficient of determination is something between 0 and 1. It is always positive. The closer to 1, the better. If our data would have been like this, then the trend line that I may have fit to this red points would have been something like this with a small value of coefficient of determination. What small value says is if you have x, if you have x, you cannot estimate y by precision because this x and this x are equal but they do have entirely two different y values. The closer the dots to a line, the higher the coefficient of determination. These points, if we fit a line to them, have a high coefficient of determination. These points will have a high coefficient of determination, close to 1. The equation of the line tells us that the line will intersect y-axis in about 175 and then with slope of negative 2.5 will go down. In general, we show the equation of a line with y equal to b0 plus b1x. b0 is intersect. b1 is the slope. In this case, in the case of the relationship between price and quantity, the slope is negative. The higher the price, the lower the sales. Now let's 
compute this equation in a different way. I come here, I type P here, I type Q here, I type intercept. Ask me what are your Y values? I say these are my Y values. And then it will ask what are your X values? I say these are X values. And then I say let me know where this line cuts the Y axis. And it tells me in 175. So this was my intercept. Slope. I will click on my Y's, comma, and my X's. And enter, and it will tell me with the slope of negative 2.5, it will go down. Let's see what this 1.75 means. So where the line cuts the y-axis that means if you put price equal to that value which is 175 in our case if you set it you sell nothing and then because it comes down with that slope then I go here if I am at 175 and if I come down at slope of negative 2.5 and therefore I divide it by negative of negative 2.5 so I say if I set my y equal to 0 equal to 0 what will happen so I will have 0 equal to negative 2.5 plus 175 negative 2.5 x plus 175 therefore if I take negative 2.5 x to the left hand side I will have 2.5 x equal to 175 so what I did here I said okay what would be if I divide 175 by negative of negative 2.5 which is positive 2.5 and then it will give me this number so that means what this means it says even if you set your price equal to zero the max you can do is to sell 70 units no what is the meaning of this 70 units? Even if you set the price equal to zero, at most you can sell 70 units. That means your site is visited 70 times and not more than that. If we set price to 175, we sell nothing. And if we set price equal to zero, we sell 70. Before going any further, let me provide you with another interesting application of this uh, trend line and as we refer to it, a regression line. This is the data I have with respect to volume of production and total cost. Now I come here. I mark this data, insert this line. This is a scatter graph of that data. Then I go and right click on it as before and say add trend line and that would be linear trend line and I say display the equation. Display R square. So the equation and R square are shown over there. Equal to total cost and quotation mark space versus dot space quotation mark and Q. Enter total cost versus Q. Go here, say equal to this one. And that is my graph. 
So using this graph, I also write the formula here, which is equal to intercept of y values, which are my total cost, and x values, which are my volume of production, enter, that is my intercept, and I also go with that, I say slope and y values, comma, x values. And these are those coefficients of my regression line. As we can see, it is 1200 plus 16x, and here is my 1200, and it's my slope. Now, because it is total cost, I can say my 1200 is estimate of fixed cost, and 16 is my estimate of variable cost. R, as we see here, is high. High R is good. That means changes in X can be explained in terms of changes in Y. I have created three different curves here to show you what are the differences between different R values. So, let me take this one over there. This is the data over there. As we see, R squared is equal to 0.86. This is another set of data, still in the same column. Another set, another set, another set, another set. In all of these, R is high, it is closer to 1 than 0. Therefore, we say a significant portion of changes in Y can be explained in changes of X. R2 here is positive, close to 1. Now, let me take you to this example. Here, this is the first column and the third column. Here, again, we have a good R. While the relationship is negative, R is still good and close to one negative and positive slope of the line. It doesn't matter. What it, it matters is whether this line can express those numbers reasonably. Now I provide you with a situation when R is closer to zero. Look at here. These numbers, we cannot represent the changes in Y in terms of changes in x. For example, this x and this x and this x all have more or less the same y. The left one is an example when b1, slope of the line, is positive, but those dots are in a line with each other. So r always comes out high. 0.91, 0.86, 0.97, and so on and so forth. The relationship between X and Y in the second graph is also good, but the relationship is negative. As X goes up, Y comes down. But changes in Y can be reasonably explained in terms of changes in X. However, in this third line, R2 is quite close to zero. That means relationship between X and Y cannot be explained. Changes in Y cannot be explained in terms of changes in X. Good, good, not good. You may ask how these regression lines are drawn we find a regression line, the best regression line is a line for which the difference between what we see on the line and what we see in real life is minimized. For example, for this X, I observe this Y, but on the regression line, I have it this one. For this X, I observe this Y, but on regression line, I have this one. Therefore, if we find 
the actual value of y when we put when we had it for a specific x and if we compute y in terms of the value of x and the line the best line is a line for which these gaps square of these gaps is minimized and that is why they call it least square method in all three examples the lines are the best lines the sum of the squares of the gap between actual observation and the value computed on the regression line for a specific x is minimized but this one this relationship is reasonable this one is reasonable and this one is not reasonable